All right, everyone, I'm back from my first term at grad school, and I just wanted to give you a little introduction to the video you're about to watch. All right, so the video you're about to watch is actually a recording of my presentation for my comprehensive musicianship class at Columbia University. It's at Teachers College Columbia University. So it was basically for the duration of the course, we were, the prompt we were given was to study some kind of musical thing that we weren't necessarily familiar with. So a lot of students chose to study different types of performance technique or different genres of music that they didn't know a ton about. What I chose to study was the theremin. So the theremin's an early electronic instrument. I talk about it in the presentation. But basically, I chose to study the performance of the theremin and then also, you know, how it tends to be set up, how it tends to be used, kind of exploring the culture of the theremin as well. So um, with my presentation, it was time limited. And then my audience was uh, predominantly like K-12 music teachers, some other types of music teachers as well. But it was very educational and um music, maybe a little bit more music performance focused than, for example, a room full of audio engineers would be. So um, I think I was the only person that was like predominantly focused on audio engineering, I think. So basically, I catered the presentation to that. So I tried to keep it. Um, I tried to explain concepts whenever possible. And I tried to bring in concepts like, oh, this is a fun way to explore with students this other field of interest or, you know, X, Y, Z. You'll see in the presentation. But anyway, that's uh, I think that's basically all I wanted to say before the presentation. Um, I hope you guys like it. I hope you find it interesting. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And I'm just going to roll the presentation. <laughs> Hey guys, so um, today we're going to talk about the theremin, that's this instrument here, um, and some themes with the theremin that are common among theremin players are, you know, exploring new sounds, exploring the science that connects to music, right, um, talking about experiments that can teach us about physics and acoustics and electronics, and the theremin ties into all of those things very, very nicely. So um, I'll just talk about the theremin a little bit. It was, it's arguably the first electronic instrument. It was invented by Leon Theremin. Uh, he patented it in 1928. And there were some names for the theremin originally. Uh, they're very hard to pronounce. Thereminophone, etherphone, and theremin box were some common ones, but they settled upon the theremin. That's what it's called now. And for playing technique, there's a lot of range with playing technique. So a lot of performers, basically what you do is you move your hands relative to these two antennas here. So this is a volume antenna and this is a pitch antenna. And you move your hand relative to the antennas and that's what generates the signal that you hear. I have mine turned down right now, so it's not like talking over me, <laughs> but that's how it works. And some players, a lot of times with the volume antenna, people kind of do this kind of motion and they often dip their middle finger kind of towards the antenna. Some antennas are straight, some have a little loop like this one, where I can kind of dip my finger into the middle of that loop. And then some performers will kind of wave their hands around here, but a lot of them have different hand uh, formations that they'll use, right? So they'll start with maybe this kind of hand formation. This one's really common. And then you have like different claw positions, so to speak, to hit the notes. I'm not very good at it. I've been working on it, but I'm not very good at it. So a lot of times it'll look like this. You'll be like, if you're doing a scale, you might my hands are shaking, so I'm nervous. Um, you'll kind of jump between the different positions to hit the notes. So um, that's the basics of playing technique that I've learned so far. Uh, and I wanted to talk about how it actually works. So the way it can generate signal with your body is it uses your body's capacitance to generate that signal. So capacitance is just an object's ability to store an electric charge. So when we talk about electronics, we have capacitors. Those are like tiny little batteries. All they do is they take the electric charge and they store it. And then when that charge is cut off from it, it slowly releases it like a battery. That's what a capacitor is. So a lot of things have capacitance. Our body has capacitance. A lot of like the water that we drink will have capacitance. Um, if it's distilled water, there's not much in it. So it often won't carry an electric charge very easily. But general, in general, drinking water, I'll have like minerals and stuff like that. And so you can actually use it for that. So um, here I can kind of show you guys. 
So I'll show you hand waving first. So I can wave my hands. So here's the volume quiet, volume louder, and then I can do the pitch. And things like my water bottle will work too. Uh, metal objects often have capacitance, right? So I can take something like this motor that we'll see in a little bit and swing it. Oops, I'm hit it. Um, things like our bubbles here have capacitance and don't all let me base, so oh, that's pretty cool. Um, we can try it, let's see if it, it'll make a signal. Sometimes this is a little hard to get a bubble out of here, let's see. Oops. Might not have enough fluid going here. You can get a flurry of bubbles, you can actually get it to make signal. Oops. I'm gonna move on from this. I actually have a video of this on my Instagram that I can show you guys. Mm. Oh, it's not working. I'm gonna have to shake it up. We can try this afterwards. Yeah? Yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, if you can get a flurry of bubbles, it'll, it'll make a bunch of random noise. It's kind of fun. Um, I'm gonna wipe the, the bubble fluid off my hands. Um, anyway, so that's the basics of how the theremin works. <laughs> it's talking over me. Uh, I also wanted to talk really quickly about acoustic versus analog versus digital sound um, because it's very relevant to this. So acoustic sound, right, it's variations in air pressure. I'm sure a lot of you guys know this, right? That's what our body interprets as sound. When we convert that into analog audio, it becomes variations in voltage. And that's usually done with a microphone, right? It's a form of transducer. It's converting one form of energy into another. So variations in voltage is what we call analog audio. And then when we go into digital audio, it becomes ones and zeros. That's how we store that information. So traditionally, the theremin is an analog instrument, but mine has extra digital components because it's a more modern version. So I have things like pitch, pitch correction. So right now I have it all the way down so I can do a smooth transition here. But if I wanted to put the training wheels on, I could turn up the pitch correction. Your head snapping to the note. So you can do that. I, I think part of the fun of the theremin is that it can go between pitches. So I like to play it without the pitch correction, but it, it could be a great um, training wheels for you if you're, if you're figuring it out. I also have effects so I can turn up like delay and reverb. And then it has a bunch of presets so it can make different sounds. The original theremin just made one sound essentially. So there are a lot of fun sounds that I can make. So um, that's the basics of my theremin. It has outputs here, so you're gonna see all these cables. We'll talk about these. So I have a USB out here. This is to go into my computer, so it's running to my computer. And I can actually control things within my computer using the USB out. And then I also have a CV out, that's this red cable here. And so CV stands for control voltage. It's really commonly used with like synthesizers and stuff like that to control different devices. So it's not the audio signal, it's a, it's a voltage for controlling. For example, you can use it to control electronics and we'll see that in a second here. And then I also have an audio out, so I could plug two speakers in if I wanted to. Um, I could run it to guitar pedals and amps and have a ton of fun making a ton of different effects with it. So um, that's the outputs there for my theremin. Um, I can show you the MIDI CC numbers. Um, so basically with my USB out, it goes to my computer and we have something called uh, MIDI data, right? So it's performance data. If you ever played a musical keyboard, you've used MIDI um, data if it's connected to a computer. And basically it's just performance data. So I can link it to any digital instrument I want. And what I have done here is I have programmed my antennas to each be something called a MIDI CC number. So that's like a routing number that's used to tell the computer what parameter you want the antennas in this case to control. So I have set um, my pitch antenna to be, that's this one, to be MIDI CC number one, which is common for modulation in a lot of digital instruments. So if I do that one, that's gonna be the default for most instruments that I open up. And then I've set CC number 11 to be the volume antenna, and that's common for expression. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys, I just have two instruments here that are both being controlled by 
this theremin. So I'm going to hit play and you'll hear as I move my hands around, it's going to affect the sound. The biggest thing that's the easiest to notice is when I move relative to the volume antenna. So I keep an eye on that one, okay? Make sense? So I could assign that to any digital instrument and have a ton of fun controlling the sound using my, my theremin. And people often use this kind of controller, not necessarily a theremin, but a, a, some kind of MIDI controller. Sometimes they have ones where they like blow through them and they move their head and that'll control different CC parameters. And that helps them if they're like playing their MIDI keyboard to make it sound more human and more organic and less digital and um, synthesized. So that's kind of fun for that. Um, let's see, let's talk about the CV out and then we're gonna put it all together. So I have my control voltage out, that's right here. We talked about this a little bit. And this is a great way to, with the theremin, you can do a lot of fun experiments, especially with students, with kids, about learning about electronics, making it exciting, making it interesting. So for example, I can plug in this motor and control it using my control voltage. So I have the control voltage, I've programmed the theremin to send the control voltage is controlled by the volume antenna here. So let me put my little line in here so you can see it better. But when I raise my hand, it spins the motor. So a lot of audio stuff and music stuff is very, very closely related to electronics. So you can learn, you can combine the two if you want. It's a ton of fun. So um, I could then bring it back into the audio realm. Let me turn off. So this that I'm plugging in here, I'm gonna put it actually in towards lower here. What I'm plugging in here, this is actually a telephone pickup coil. So there's like a little microphone in here. There's a suction cup and a little microphone. And if I want, let me turn down the other thing. Just, I can take, I think the speaker should be on, right? I can take the sound of the motor and I can use that to generate signal. And if I wanted to, I could then, you know, pitch that or modify that in a computer and turn it into some kind of musical component. So there's a lot of fun stuff you can do with this kind of um, device. Let's see. Uh, so another thing that you can do is you can learn a lot about how our, uh, our uh, DAW, so digital audio workstations, how our effects within those tend to work. So um, for example, oftentimes we use reverbs, right? And so reverbs were usually emulating some kind of acoustic space to give it a feeling like it's in an acoustic space, right? So um, originally, what people used to do, they still do it sometimes, to be honest, but what people used to do in the analog days is they would, sometimes they would have something called a spring reverb, and that's what I'm mimicking here. And what they would do is they'd have a spring in some kind of a chamber. So I have like a little tiny chamber with the lid of my um, mixer here. But they would send signal out, so that's why I have this speaker here. And then they have the spring, and then this is a little contact microphone. I have another one I can show you, actually. So this is actually a microphone right here. It's a little tiny, tiny contact microphone. And what it does is it picks up, my string's going crazy. It picks up the signal of the spring vibrating sympathetically to the speaker. So um, that's how a lot of spring reverbs were originally done. So if you ever see like a spring reverb in your computer, it's mimicking that. So I'm gonna have that on. And just in the interest of time, I'm gonna play, I have a beat here. And I'm gonna play the theremin alongside the beat with everything all together. And then we can do questions or whatever. Perfect. Um, cool. So let me just make sure everything's up to some extent. Kind of low, so it doesn't overpower the computer. Okay. <laughs> Alright, you ready? Actually, I'm going to turn down a little bit so it's not quite as overwhelming. I've been workshopping all the different setups for this.
Okay, so that's it. I hope you liked it. Let me know what you think in the comments below. As always, like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I'd appreciate all of that stuff. And, you know, I would love to nerd out more with anyone that's interested in this. I, um, you know, I dug into this a ton more than I put in my presentation, and I had a lot of fun with it, and it's really an interesting topic. So if anyone wants to nerd out more about it, uh, let me know. I'm around, you know. Um, other than that, you know, I have a Patreon, so it's patreon.com slash noise. My patrons get access to additional content. The Discord is the big thing that we've been focusing on lately. We have a book club on there. It's a ton of fun. So that's there if you're interested. And I come out with new videos every Wednesday. And thank you so much for hanging out. Okay. You know, it really does feel good to be home. I, like I say this with love, like I grew up in the New York area and... You know how sometimes people will talk about what the city was for you growing up? That was New York for me. Like, my dad worked in the World Trade Center. I, my friends and I sometimes would, like, skip school and go into the city, go into New York City um, to hang out and stuff. You know, we go to concerts there. Um, I was in a commuter town for New York. So I say it with love. Like, I do, I do like New York. But um, I never want to go there in the summer ever again. And I'm going to have to. And I hate the heat. I hate the humidity. I think people just don't realize that it doesn't have to be that way. Like, I am so happy to be back in San Diego. I keep talking about the air like a weirdo, like a weird old person. I'm just like talking about how great the air is here and just like breathing it in and enjoying it. So, um, yeah, I've just been really happy to be home. And then back in my studio, too. I really missed that. That was uh, that was tough. But they kept they kept me really busy. Like my. My advisor at Columbia described the summer term as being at a blistering pace, and he was not kidding, not kidding at all. So <laughs> it was it was great. It was really cool, but it was a lot of work, and um, I'm happy to be back, and now I'm going to be doing remote classes for a little while um, before I have to return to New York again at some point, and um, the remote classes are supposed to be not at a blistering pace. So that should be nice. And I'm just really excited to be part of that community. It's such a great community. And everyone's very welcoming and encouraging and just excited to explore music. And that's exactly what I'm down for. So I'm really happy with it. So anyway, I don't know, now I'm blabbering. So I'll talk to you guys later. Okay, bye.